Hey, what's going on? Damn. Had to get into it. Made a phone call. And yes, this is water. <clears throat> Made a phone call on the show. And like I say, I always say you just ask a few questions to learn a lot about people and what they really represent and what they're really all about. <clears throat> a lot of people didn't catch it because I was the last caller. But I'll say this, but a lot of people still commented on what I called on. You give coon agent Negroes a few tests. Give them the gay test. Give them the Jew test. Give them the Farrakhan test. And you could probably give them the Illuminati test too, but that'll be Jew too. And the gay test. I think I said that. There's four tests, but Farrakhan is the extra one you throw in. And the reason why you throw that in is because technically people who are not a part of the nation of Islam they shouldn't be supporting Farrakhan as if he's their leader because if he's not in the nation of Islam uh, if you're not in the nation of Islam why are you supporting him or Elijah Muhammad for that matter but we know why but before I get into that, just want to make note of a few things I experienced the other day. I was in Fort Lee, New Jersey the other day. Monday or Tuesday, one of, one of those days. And, um... <laughs> First of all, I was in Sea Caucus, New Jersey first. So that was number one. Because I had to go by that way and then end up by Fort Lee anyway. Normally, if you're coming from New York or Connecticut or someplace else, you got to go through Fort Lee to get over the bridge. But most people probably just go past and just keep on rolling. Sometimes, depending on where you might have to go in New Jersey, or if you're just passing through, you could go right in town or on different roads that might take you in town, and then you might be able to look around, look around. But not too much. But anyway, this time I was on a mission since I knew I was going to be going through there. So it was my first time actually seeing the back parts of the city per se. I've seen other parts more urbanized, but more the cleaner living parts. And it ain't bad. A lot of foreigners. Of course, it's Korean. Mainly. Uh, in every store I went into, the Koreans weren't shocked, but fucking East Indian, of course, was, you know, like, What's he about? Hispanics? Like, oh, what's, what's this guy about? Shit, what are you about? Foreigners? But anyway, they, they're not the problem today. Believe it or not. Because <laughs> I went into one store. Uh, anybody familiar with Fort Lee? There was an Acme grocery store on, I think they, it's pronounced Lemon Lemon Avenue. There's a place... I think it's a pharmacy right next to it. Yeah, I was looking for a lot of a particular lottery ticket since I was there. Because you don't want to waste the toll while you're in New Jersey, you know what I mean? Shit, so you might as well get what you can get when you're there instead of, you know, don't be stupid and leave and then pay a toll and then say, damn, I should have gotten that. Don't do that. So I went there. First, there was a Korean lady in a Mercedes SUV. She went up first. Then I parked. 
Then I checked something on the phone. She didn't leave her car. You know what I'm thinking. Scared. So I go down the little hill. <clears throat> going to the pharmacy. Korean in there. Store kind of smelled. You know, kind of funky. Maybe it's, you know, they eat a lot of pork. Maybe body odor from pork. And I ain't trying to be funny, but maybe that's that was kind of messing up. The, but the place is very clean. And they weren't scared. Two females alone. They weren't scared. They weren't looking shocked or nothing like that. Everything was cool. But anyway, that, that was just a side note to show that they weren't afraid. So, while I'm going back and forth, because I'm trying to uh, look at these, uh, get what I'm trying to get. So, and using the GPS, I got to keep moving back and forth. Uh, and of course, I noticed the Palisades Parkway North uh, entrance, which uh, I said that's good, cool. I got to make note of that. So, I go one way because of the way everything is now. Without the GPS, some people might get end up going over the bridge and paying that toll. So, you, you can just make sure that you don't. So, I go one way. Uh, actually, before that, before I even get to uh, Fort Lee, I was in the Sea Caucus. One of the usual routes I might take. I don't know the street, but it's around where they built that new Wawa. Because they don't have too many Wawas in northern New Jersey. But now that they're starting to come on with Wawas. Uh, so I go down. I, I, the GPS made me take one detour for some odd reason. Come up a short street. And um, the cop already has somebody pulled over. He was finishing up the business with them. I come. Then he hurries up and gets in his SUV. Goes down the short street. Turns around with his lights flashing. But the siren's not on, of course. And then as he turns around, then he took the flashing lights off, but kept the lights on. And then gets right behind me very close. I said, damn. You know New York is right over there. I mean, I mean, what the fuck? So I guess they see the plates. He didn't pull me over, by the way. But, you know, they pulled that intimidating move. Getting right up on you. So they can get your plates, look in the car. See who you might be. And engage your reaction. Because, you know, most Negroes, unfortunately, especially if they want it. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of black guys, uh, unfortunately, when they either have weed, gun in the car, drugs, warrants, cops come behind them. First thing they think is, oh, shit, how they how they find me? Start panicking. And they don't realize it. God damn it. They didn't find you. You just fucking paranoid. <laughs> Unless the car is stolen, if the plates and shit come back hot, then uh, you know, I guess you should be getting nervous. But if the car is legit, then you know there ain't no need to panic because they don't have any reason to pull you over. So what I did, you know, I'm looking at the GPS to see where the uh, speed limit is. I, I couldn't see it immediately, so I said, you know what? Because when cops get behind you like that, sometimes you know they you go one uh, mile over the speed limit, pulling you over. <laughs> so I said, let me just make sure I don't do that. So I stayed under 30. And luckily there was traffic and, and he kept on staying behind me. Tracked the trailer in front of me. Trying to, you know, trying to see if he can uh, get, get me to panic. So I, I got the water that people hate in the car. I slowly pick it up, take a sip. In a calm, controlled, relaxed manner. Just like I just did just now. And I would advise black people to do that. Because that shows that the police, because they're, they're observing everything. That goes to show that you're not panicky. And you're not riding dirty. You're not wanted. But, you know, some of these nervous wrecks, especially when they're doing drugs, you know, they can't remain calm. 
They said, oh, shit, the cops are behind me. I got to run. Caused a whole bunch of chaos for nothing. Cop probably didn't even know who the fuck you were. But that was an intimidating thing that the cop did. Followed me for about, what? I'd say about three, four blocks. And then he cut out. Quickly and abruptly. But no lights on. But they keep no lights flashing, but he kept the lights on. So if you don't know how the lights work on the police car and you see the lights on, you're going to be thinking to yourself, damn, I might be getting pulled over. The lights have to be flashing in order for that means that means that something's happening now. In an emergency, they have to they put the siren on so they can't put the siren on. Unless it's an emergency. So that's why it's not. That's why people got to understand you can't panic. For no reason. So anyway. I'm out of there. And I said. Motherfucker. That's what I was thinking. So now I'm in Fort Lee. I'm going to pick up where I left off. So. I got to admit these back roads in Fort Lee. Back neighborhoods. They were looking nice and clean. I I, got to admit. Gotta admit. Uh, so, you know, I stand out like a sore thumb because it's mostly Korean and foreigners. So, anyway, I go on this Lemonine, Lemonine Avenue, however you pronounce it. I go one way because I there was one spot I had to check out. They didn't have what I was looking for. So, and this is also a rare spot in New Jersey <laughs> where you can actually... If you want to go left, you can actually take take left turns. <laughs> that is the shocking part about it. I was like, damn, I don't have to do no special eyeball shit to make a left turn. <laughs> so, you know, that for, it was clean. It was clean. I doubt, I highly doubt that if a black person were looking to move there, I seriously doubt that Anybody would rent to us. No matter how much we got. When foreigners get a hold of a city or a hood. They shut other people out. Especially us. They'll put the Mexicans in because they're working. For their businesses. But anyway. Going down the street. The opposite way. I'm looking in the rear view. There's a uh, police SUV. With the lights. Strobing. But not flashing. Because <laughs> there was some construction type shit going on. So. You know some people should know the difference between strobing lights and flashing lights. Strobing just means. I'm here. Be careful what you're looking at. Get the fuck out of here. Nosy. So I'm seeing nothing's happening. So then I look down, look at the GPS, real glance, just to see, uh, making sure I'm on the right track. Because you know some streets can get a little tricky sometimes when they start cutting off, especially New Jersey with their wacky roads. So, then I look back up, check the rear view, because you always got to, you know, see what's going on. And lo and behold, a motorcycle cop, who I did not see back there, is right behind me. And he's close again, just like the Sea Caucus cop. And both of these cops are white, by the way. <laughs> I'm like, a motorcycle cop. How often do you see one of them? So, he's right behind me. No lights at all. I'm like, I know this motherfucker doesn't have to be right behind me. Now, of course, a motorcycle cop have a better view inside of your vehicle than a cop in an SUV would. So he goes to the left side of me. Trying to play it off like he's about to either pull ahead or take a left. So we're at a light. I wasn't looking at him, but I was thinking to myself, this motherfucker, 
I mean, the road, surprisingly, the roads were kind of empty. So you knew he was targeting me. Cause who, who the fuck else was he targeting? It's a Korean town. Obviously, I don't fit in. I'm not Korean. So the light turns. I move up first. He acts like he was turning. Then he comes back around. Now he's riding on my right side. Then we stop at the next light. <laughs> this time, I'm looking right at him saying, you motherfucker. But he's not looking at me. Then he finally takes that right and he's out of there. Now, legally speaking, the police can do all that kind of shit. And that, that's another way they can profile you. And, and then if you say, hey, man, you're racially profiling me. I'm not racially profiling you. I'm just driving. I said, I'm on duty. What you talking about? <laughs> I ain't pull you over, did I? That's how they get slick. Now, part of it is because, you know, petty criminals have a tendency to panic when they see the police. But you know they run your plates. The car doesn't come back stolen. It's registered, insured. And the registered owner, me, has no warrants. So why are you keeping keeping on following me? Because you see a black man in a Korean hood. You're wondering if I'm here in New York plates on top of that. But it's not like New York is far away. It's like right over the bridge. And you're wondering to yourself... Why is he here? Well, why is anybody there? I could be there. So, you know, that was just my little experience that I had. I'm surprised it took 17 minutes to explain it all. But it just stayed in my mind, you know what I mean? I'm telling you, even when I'm in New York suburbs, I never expect, well, I mean, technically that's, that's a New York suburb too, but I mean, New York suburb in New York. <laughs> I don't experience such treatment. Never been followed. Well, except for that MP, M, MTA police one time in Scarsdale. That was the only time, other times some shit like that happened, but no official police. Except for this shit in New Jersey. Two times in two different towns. Same day. And my car is not filthy. It's new looking. And I got another tip for black guys who like doing crime. Keep your cars washed and clean. And shined up. That shows that you care about it. Now as far as the rims. Which draw attention to your car as possible drug dealing and criminality. And the dark tents, all of those scream, I'm doing crime. Now, I've had debates about this with people I know. And they, I would tell them, you know, people like getting tents because they're doing drugs, selling drugs, packaging drugs, and got guns and shit. And don't want nobody to see. They say, no, it ain't. I say, yes, it is, man. Come on. Stop the bullshit. But whatever the case is, whether you think it is or not, to police. When they see dark tents and it ain't no motherfucking limousine. And it's a car from the 2000s or 90s or 80s and shit. They like, yeah, something's up. But in my case, I don't have dark tents. I got whatever low level tents that came on the car. And um, that's what they decide to do. Now, for your information, if I would have said it, that's the thing. That's why I kept riding the speed limit. But don't go so slow either. Like if the speed limit is 30, don't start doing 15. Because that's, that's a panic move. That's why I stayed at around 29. Because a long time ago, I remember a cop, I think it was in Greenwich, Connecticut. I did not stop at a stop sign long enough for him. <laughs> I thought it was too fucking 
seconds or something like that. Then he's like, oh, no, you should stop five seconds. I said, man, I stop. Nobody to the left, to the right, in front. I mean, what more do you want? At that particular time, I was riding uh, without insurance because my insurance had dropped me from my accident. And the guy, cop was about to say, well, I could tow your car, but since you <laughs> came from where you came from, I'm going to let you ride it. I, I just took that as a, just get the fuck out of this town. That's a, that's, a, that's what I took that as. So uh, I took the advice and I got the fuck out. <laughs> so, <laughs> since I didn't have insurance. And the car wasn't old. It was a new car, too. But my insurance had dropped me that time. That's when I first started driving. It just dropped me. And I didn't even know that they, they, they dropped me. So by the time I figured it out, insurance costs were too high. But after that, obviously, I straightened that shit out and regained the trust. But anyway. So, yeah, before I get to the main topic, don't drive at 15 because that's another panic move. Technically, most places will give you a 10 mile over the speed limit leeway. But when the cops are behind you like that, don't even fuck with that leeway. Just, just, just keep it at the limit. One mile uh, beyond, uh, under the limit. And if they still pull you over, say, hey, man, what was I doing? You were speeding. Couldn't have been because I was. I, made, I saw you behind me. Even before you were behind me, I made sure I followed the speed limit. Now, if it went up or down one mile over or one mile under, I mean, come on. But that's an intimidation move. Anyhow, anyhow let me get to the main point. Now, I was going to go live with this shit. But. You know, my shit ain't prepared all the time, so. Because I was going to do the OBC uh, shit so I could play me some clips. I might put that shit in an, in another video. Because I didn't have my clips. Like I said, that hard drive I had <laughs> that failed had all my Malcolm X clips. I had every Malcolm X, X clip available. So now I got to get them again. But. And I was going to put it together as an intro or on the live or something like that. So an old OBC or old DBC, whatever it's called. The only thing I don't like about that, you got to set everything up like you're doing. A, uh, I, I get it live on the air broadcast, which is what you're doing. But you just that's why you see when I do the lives, I like just pulling up on the web browsers or some shit like that because it's just quicker to do. Other shit, you got to have the shit prepared and shit. And then when you come up with some new shit that pops into your head, now you got to find scavenge for the shit and find the shit. I, that, that, I don't have time for that shit. And then the web browser, they still didn't allow you to put your own. I, I, I guess you could do the screenshot, but they just do their own web browser with their controls. It's more like a, a mobile, old school mobile web browser. Not like modern where it's like, like your desktop web browser. So I don't like that. And I guess I only wanted to try it again because it came with the NVIDIA. Uh, it works with the NVIDIA cards. Then the NVIDIA broadcaster I tried years ago, but when I had that shit on, it changed my uh, settings to the point where my individual settings for the games and shit they couldn't be adjusted. So, and there was nothing I could do. I tried everything possible. Registry, registry uh, fixes, deletions, all types of shit. Uninstall, reinstall, uh, in place upgrade on Windows, every damn thing. It just fucked everything up. I said, this is from NVIDIA. So I'm afraid to put that shit in, even though it's a newer version now, I'm just afraid to put that shit in because the same shit. I even contacted NVIDIA and they couldn't, uh, they didn't seem to want to help or know what to do. Anyway, the main topic, 24 minutes later, <laughs> is um, I called the Jason Black Show, the so-called Black Authority. Let me set it up by saying 
These people are fucking frauds. Now, the man, I, I, I go with the positives first. The man provides entertainment. I'll give him that. The man does not provide freedom fighting. That's number one. If you look at the time this Negro spends doing lives between his weekend gig, his black authority, and his the business shit. The business seems to go uh, on all the damn time. He doesn't have time to work. He doesn't have time to be a fucking activist. So what he's doing is what his buddy Tariq Nashi does. Grifting and hustling. Sounding good. But not being real. And by the way, Tariq Nasheed supports Farrakhan too. The business. All he does is babble. About black women. And how they're pieces of shits. That's it. For some odd reason, he thinks that Sierra's going to leave Russell Wilson because he got cut from the Broncos. The motherfucker got cut and he got paid. The, why, why the fuck would she leave? Fucking idiot. And Russell Wilson got so much fucking money, the only thing he stands to lose would be half of what the fuck he made. But he can still go on and get him another woman. But like all the people who used to make videos on YouTube about real conspiracies, they said all these celebrities must marry other celebrities. The main, especially the main big shots. That's why you see uh, Rihanna, Jay Z, Kanye West, whoever the fuck you can think of. They gotta marry each other. Now you got the, uh, I forgot my man's name now, who played Kang in the movie, is getting with uh, Megan Good. I'm like, what the fuck? Now, if Jason Black want to talk about that shit, digging up an old fossil like that, talk about that. I'm like, out of all the females he could have run into, you know, run into uh, Jonathan Winters, or whatever the fuck his name is, Majors. And I'm running into Megan, Megan Good. And then you gotta ask yourself, why do these why are these females that look good and are famous are always fucking single, usually no kids, and the only people they can they seem to get hooked up with are celebrities? I used to think, oh, it's because of the money. Because if they go with a regular guy, you know they're not gonna get anybody making their kind of money. But then you look at people like Sierra which I know she couldn't have made too much money off of her career. And I ain't trying to be funny. I'm just being real. So that's why they would always hook up with an athlete, pro athlete, former, current, because that's a security blanket. A lot of these female entertainers don't make that kind of money. That, that girl that used to be in that WV who married Eddie George. She made sure she secured her future because I didn't know shit about how they were hurting for cash and shit until I seen that unsung. I said, damn. But marrying Eddie George, that, 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 that sealed the deal right there. But anyway, he has that show. He claimed, he said, I got demonetized. So can you support the show however you can? But before, this Negro used to brag and say, my channels are not demonetized. My channels are not monetized. I speak what I want, say what I want. Yeah. Now you're begging for money saying you got demonetized, so you pick up the slack. Thought you weren't monetized, Negro. Told you they lie. You think they come on there like clockwork? Just to do it. You could tell I do it just to do it. Because I'm not monetized and I'm not getting no motherfucking money. Not too much anyway. 
And he lies and says he's shadow banned. That's more lies to get more money out of you. To make you think that he's not a coon agent. You see his fucking live views. 4,000 after every video. He has 34,000 views. 50,000 in two days. Motherfucker, is that shadow? Is that what shadow banning is? <laughs> Shit, if that's the case, I'm sure everybody who's crying about being shadow banned wouldn't mind being shadow banned like that. And then he starts comparing himself to white YouTubers. The reason why they get more views, number one, because they're white. Two, they're talking about shit that interests white people. You are talking about white people and shit that only interests some black people. So, of course, you're not going to get their views, but that's why he picks up the slack talking about relationships. This Negro has not produced one woman. The Negro admitted he has no kids. The Negro sounds like a fucking putting on a tutu and wear lipstick and makeup, man. And you know I'm not lying. Yeah, I'm pissed because this guy likes insulting people a lot and doesn't like them talking. So, this is what this guy does. I'm about to get me some more water out the trunk. Um... <laughs> So he's talking about relationships and women. Notice how he's talking shit about women. But not really talking shit about men. So that's, that, that's what gay men do. Critique women. Only, only critiquing the women you'll hear me critique is people wearing uh, tacky wigs and weaves. <laughs> that's, that's about it. But you never hear me commenting on women's clothing, what brands they wear. Because like I said, man, when it comes to female accessories and clothes and like high heels and boots and belts and purses and jewelry and shit like that that's the type of shit i'm not concerned with at all i mean the only thing i can compare it to is women if they look at guys uh, dealing with sports and video games and shit like that you know they're turned off speaking of that i might get that xbox one it was Xbox One X or Xbox X S or whatever it is. Because I figured, man, I was going to get PlayStation 5. But I'm like, man, I don't want to spend a lot of money on this shit. Because really, I'm only going to be playing NBA 2K. So I said, fuck it. I might as well get that shit since that shit is cheap. Because the TV going to upscale this shit anyway. The 4K. So my TV is great. That high sense I keep telling people about. I might get that shit just, just for that game. Because I had it on PC, but they give you the uh, last generation shit. They always do Other than that, I you know, on top of that, they got cross-play with Xbox and PlayStation. So that way I can deal with everybody. And you know, I didn't really want to go Xbox anymore because uh, Bill Gates. But I'm like, shit, man, I could find one for like 200. So fuck that. Anyway, it's Jason Black. Matter of fact, fuck this. I might as well get this water right now out the trunk because this is about to go. Probably by the time <laughs> when it's time for me to go, that's probably when I, I got to go to the bathroom. <laughs> this is the world premiere. And then getting the shit in the trunk. Oh, yeah, I had to so even more water for the people who love when I drink water. Also, I had to renew my BJ's membership. <clears throat> I'll give you a tip. Put in, if you want to renew yours and not pay the full price, put in <laughs> BJ's $20 membership. And then that should have come right up and you'll pay $20. And um, if you got that raw cootin, 
you'll be able to get the uh, the money back on that too. <laughs> um, I mean, the only thing you have to do is just make a new account. That's all. Simple as that. Costco's I don't fuck with because their membership costs too fucking much and it stays high. I know they're, they're number one. That's probably why. But shit. Ain't no $60. A lot of times when I when I went to Costco's, they didn't really have a lot of what I wanted anyway. I don't know if it's because the shit is bigger, the, the packages, but the only thing I really used to buy from Costco's on a regular basis was the gigantic bag of spinach because you could do a whole lot with that. The Aussie Bites, which Sam's Club used to have, but they don't have any more. But for some odd reason, the one in uh, Costco says organic, but the one in Sam's Club didn't say it was organic. I'm like, damn, it's made by the same company. Same shit. How can, one be, how can they waste time making an organic one and one that's not organic? My guess is that the one that's not organic probably is organic, but just not packaged saying it's organic. That, that's, that's my guess. But um, that big bag of chips and some organic shit. I mean, that's really what they had that I like the organic shit. But anyway, Jason Black. He has his business shit. You know, people, some people complain about the fact that I don't show my face. Like I had a run in with that in my eye forever. He's talking about Hannibal. Being black and not being black. Are the coins depicting Hannibal or not? So I said, let me try this Negro one more time. Told him I just want to kick the knowledge about the, the, the discussion of what's going on. He's so adamant about people showing their face. I'm like, man, you're a motherfucker European. What are you worried about uh, people in the United States showing their faces for? Doesn't make any goddamn sense. You hear to hear, hear about the, the information, but he's another slickster like that Tarka Bay. Lying behind the scenes. Well, even while they're on the air, they lie to the to the people, to the public. The only people he's interacting with behind the scenes knows that he's fucking lying. <laughs> These people are really slick. And to Harker Bay, he was supposed to, uh, you know, I asked him to come on the channel to discuss some things. He's like, I ain't coming on no struggle channel. I know my worth. Motherfucker, you're a YouTuber. You don't, you're not worth shit. And that's what I just said. A goddamn YouTuber. I'm talking about you know your worth. If you know your worth, I dare you to call up a club in Baltimore, D.C., and say, I charge 10 G's to make an appearance at your club. They'll hang the phone up on you. You know your worth. If you came on my channel, that wasn't doing nothing for my channel. I was on Aboriginal Powers channel for what? About an hour or two? That did nothing for my channel because I, unlike Jason Black, I am actually shadow banned. I know people have been looking at my numbers. Stuck on 1580 for what? Two years? Three years? <laughs> at best, they put it up to 1590 and then drop it right down. They, they keep playing that game. That's what you call true shadow banning. The only thing is my views still outweigh the restrictions on uh, sub count. And I do get view better views than a lot of people with, who supposedly have higher sub counts. Which goes to show that there's some funny business going on. And I told Aboriginal Power, I said, if there was one million people and you told them to sub to my channel and they actually did sub, you two would never show it. I'd be stuck at 1580. That's true shadow banning Jason Black. You lying ass piece of shit. These guys lie because they're hustling you out of money trying to make you feel bad for them. Oh, man, he, he's shadow banned. Oh, my God. We got to give him some money. Everything he talks about, give me money. Donate to the show. 
and he acts like he's a fucking activist, donate to the uh, 8 a.m. documentary. I have not seen not one of this motherfucker's documentary. Is it on Tubi? Where the fuck is it at? I don't know the quality. I don't know how he gets interviews with people. But he must be uh, behind the scenes, backdoor connected. Yeah, I mean that in every way too. Backdoor connected type of guy. You know I'll tell his ass off to his face or on his damn show. But he always hangs up on people when this shit gets too rough for his ass. No pun intended. Uh, so, uh, this guy is a fraud. He's arrogant. He's a homosexual. And I will call him a homosexual. Matter of fact, I, if you recall, when I was last called him up, I think it was the first time I called him up, I called him a homosexual. And the motherfucker didn't deny it. You go back into the archives and look that shit up. He never denied that shit. <laughs> When I said greasing your ass up and all, that's what you do. Grease your ass up. He ain't denying shit. Should be clear to people what type of man you're dealing with. He's an entertainer on YouTube. And there's nothing wrong with that. But just stop trying to act like you're a fucking black activist and that you're doing something. Fighting white supremacy and fighting for reparations. His reparations comes every time he does a show. Like I said, if you can get super chats in the thing and you can get memberships, you're monetized. Anybody who has a fucking channel knows this shit. But people who don't have a channel or who don't, you know, make content on a regular basis, they don't know this shit. So stop letting these Negroes fool you. Also... This guy's not an activist. Puts up a billboard here or a billboard there. How's that activism? He always talks about boots on the ground. Where are you, your boots at? He said he was with the Jim Clyburn thing. Why is he a mystery man? How, how the hell are you going to be an activist and a mystery man at the same time? Most loudmouth activists, they like being out and seen and heard. This one only likes being heard. <laughs> I mean, and it's on YouTube. Where, I mean, where the fuck else are you at? Nowhere. So, the man had the show about Malcolm X. The supposed new information. Once you see Crump on the case, you know it's fake. Trust me, for people who know that, you know, there's no such thing as a lawyer for the entire country, unless he's the motherfucking attorney general or something. But Trump is always everywhere. What they've been doing, they've been on a crusade to exonerate the nation of Islam. Farrakhan and Elijah Muhammad, Master Mason. That's why every time a Negro from the Nation of Islam says, how come that white man didn't arrest Farrakhan? It's because he's a fucking Mason. That's why. That's why Elijah Muhammad wasn't touched. If they would have killed, taken out, <laughs> can't even say that kind of shit anymore. Wow, who gives a fuck? If they would have taken out a white man, they wouldn't have been protected. No matter what, these Negroes conspired with the white man to take out a black man. They were following orders from their true master, just like their master Farad. They've been trying to say that the guys who were caught weren't involved, and other Negroes repeat the shit. They were involved. God damn it. Motherfucking conspiracy to make sure that the man got take it out it's not gonna take one person it's gonna take a few to occupy the stage and i ain't talking about the actual stage i'm talking about the crime scene it's clear that the police were involved we know that we know that the fucking fbi was involved and let the shit happen 
We know that. But what we do know is that Negroes from the Nation of Islam pulled the trigger. We know that. And the white man knows that too. That's why he made sure he had them do the shit. <laughs> Instead of him. I mean, come on. Now, all of a sudden, you got Negroes. They got to defend Farrakhan because he's a Mason. Who are acting as if they're stupid now. Or better yet, they're really acting like you're stupid. Dick Gregory, another coon agent, who I called a coon agent when he was alive. And I call him one in death. I don't have any mercy for any coon agents. It's one thing to sell people out and have the people still be alive. But then when you sell them out and kill them, that's a different thing. James Smalls, uh, hey, Aboriginal power. Sorry to say, but. If that nigga is, is uh, uh, you know, he's old any goddamn way. So, I mean, things should be happening. But like I say, James Smalls was around. <laughs> when Malcolm X gets killed, Khaled gets shot and dissed. And Clarence uh, 13X at the same time. So, this guy is always involved on the scene. And he's a Mason. Now, I'm not going to argue about what Masons do, what Masons don't do. All I know is is when people are Masons, there's killing involved. That's what I do know. Regardless of the reasons for the killing, is sanctioned killing. Same thing with uh, JFK. Sanctioned killing. Everybody said, fuck it. He's got to go. Like I said, they always talk, these Negroes always talk about J. Edgar Hoover, but he was a Mason. So whose side was he really on? You got black Masons that obeyed the Masonic Code. And J. Edgar Hoover was just doing what he was instructed to do. So who is the true enemy? That's the question. And that's why Farrakhan and Elijah Muhammad were not touched. And that's why they always speak of this, I'm protected by God. Because God is the white man. And I know some Nation of Islam guys would be like, God ain't the white man. Well, check your master Farad Muhammad and get back to me. But Farrakhan did not even really believe in a master Farad Muhammad because he switched to Scientology. And I told this to this Jason Black faggot. Matter of fact, let me strike that. Because some people might try to say, oh, that's hate speech. But if it, if it comes down, it's going on Rumble. So, <laughs> so you, it could be what it's going to be. Told this guy that. Uh, Farrakhan went to Scientology and he tried to say no he's not and I told people for years since the Scientology shit that the mainstream media the small hat media that's another thing these people for, uh, Jason Black and Nasheed when it comes to the small hats that's one of the tests they can't go against them. To them, the small hats are all like white people. See, the small hats tell you it's white supremacy. But somehow, they're not white. But, fair, but uh, Tariq Nashi says they're all white and doesn't want to sing out the small hat who's in control. Well, whatever the case is, The small hat media made no announcement. They protect Farrakhan. That's why they're trying to clean up his legacy before he finally bites the dust. All these other people got gunned down or taken out. He's supposed to have had cancer since what? 2000 or some shit like that? 
seems to be doing pretty good for an old man with, with, with cancer, like Magic Johnson with his HIV. Farrakhan's supposed to have cancer. I think he had his bladder removed and some other shit. Even survived COVID as an elderly man. Get the fuck out of here. The man has never even been arrested. Since he was with the Nation of Islam. And I still stand by what I told the irritating genie years ago. Farrakhan, I believe he was a coon agent from the beginning. When he entered the Nation of Islam. This guy openly, vocally ordered the deaths of the people who kill James Shabazz and said, I want them murdered. He didn't say, I want them taken out. No cryptic language. He said, I want them murdered. And I want their heads. And that's what happened. Nothing. <clears throat> Nothing happens to him. He made the announcement that he's switching to Scientology. Mainstream media says nothing about it. He even told you, told his crew, who to start looking at. The white man. The leaders of Scientology. Look at them. They're the ones who got the special solution. The, the small hat media could have easily discredited Farrakhan and said the man is a Scientologist now. Now he's really kooky. Don't follow this guy. But the small hat media did no such thing. They didn't even let it be known that he switched to Scientology. And not and no longer uh, follows his master Farad Muhammad. That right there alone tells you what the real deal is with the nation of Islam and his real beliefs. There's also other nation of Islams out here. Silas Muhammad, son of man, Eric Muhammad. Solomon, Brother Solomon, who a lot of people don't know it, but, you know, I've had some uh, conversations with him in the past. And there was some other guy, too. The small hat media makes no mention of these people. Because they don't want you thinking that Farrakhan is not supposed to be the real deal. But his nation of Islam is not the nation of Islam. It's not Elijah. Like I was telling this Jason Black. I might just show that shit in a separate video or might follow this one or I might do both for people who didn't hear the discussion. I told this jackass that Farrakhan's nation of Islam is not Elijah's nation of Islam. This Negro told me that he was the hand-picked successor to Elijah Muhammad. See, these Negroes are coon agents, but at the same time, they never want to be wrong. If you notice with this Jason Black, every time people kiss his ass, he lets them speak and says, yeah, that's right. But as soon as you disagree, he, he won't let you finish a sentence. He disrupts and interrupts and tries to rearrange everything that you're saying. That's part of the reason I had my own channel because I used to be on a, a show and I noticed that every time I'm telling the truth people want to turn it around and, and try to abuse you. And that's what you experience with a lot of these cool Negroes on uh, YouTube. So <clears throat> I said let me get my own channel and speak my own mind. And then of course they got upset because they saw a whole lot of people were listening at the time especially on the last channel. So, Farrakhan's Nation of Islam. And you know, I've spoken about it many, many times. And I had to buy books in order to see how Wallace was voted the leader of the Nation of Islam. And this guy tries to rearrange, and you can listen to the conversation we had. The guy's lying in the same fucking sentences that we're talking about. I said that Farrakhan is not in control of the nation of Islam. That was Elijah's nation of Islam. He's like, yes, they were. And I said, Wallace 
was in control. He's like, no, he wasn't. And then later on, I said, Farrakhan was under Wallace. And then he's like, yeah, the nation of Islam. The motherfucker's is tripping over his own lies. That's why he hung up on me. But I'll reiterate, Wallace was voted the leader of the nation of Islam after Elijah left or died. Not Farrakhan. Farrakhan served under Wallace. What was his name? Abdul Lima Muhammad or some shit like that. And if you can find him back in the day in the 70s, he was looking like an Arab out of Arabia. And there's also Elijah Muhammad Jr. You should ask yourself, how come they didn't vote him in? Since he's the namesake. And you see, he was more of a vicious guy. Wallace is a slickster. He's the one who kept manipulating Malcolm X. See, he always came. came I even spoke to Wallace a few times, too. He always came off as a cool guy. And this is before I knew the, 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 the core details of the situation. <laughs> he seemed like he was cool. Now, for people who don't know Wallace... Before he died, he motherfucker was married to a fucking 14-year-old girl, taken right after his father. For people who don't know that shit. See, the small hats could easily, they could just destroy them totally. But they don't because they work for the small hats, and the small hats need them to be seen as legit. That's why. See, this is why I told Aboriginal Power, I'd like to debate Wesley Muhammad. Because you know what I do to him. That's why they run scared for me. My eye forever run scared. Sai Netter running scared. Jason Black running scared. Anybody who claims or thinks that they somebody running scared. Dr. Maat running scared. James Smalls running scared. Uh, what's that guy? Baruti Atuti or whatever the fuck his name is. Running scared. Now, nah, you know, they're going to say, why are you disrespecting the elder? Because they're running scared. That's why. <laughs> it should. Same thing with Karinga. Running scared. See, they don't like questioning because they know they're lying. See, when they get a dimwit, then they say, yeah, yeah, brother. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. They feel good. But when they come across people like me who's going to ask some pertinent, to-the-point questions, looking for pertinent, to-the-point answers, if you notice with me, I don't do like some Negroes do when they argue. When they uh, ask you to uh, ask the question. For example, they might ask the question like. Leaving out. Uh, sausage, leaving out bacon. And other meat toppings except pepperoni. What's your favorite meat pizza? Then you start saying, well, you know, uh, steak sounds good. No, I said, leaving out everything but pepperoni. <laughs> In other words, they're trying to get you to say pepperoni. See, that's how Negroes argue and ask questions. No, I don't do that shit. I just ask the fucking question. Wait for the answer. That answer will let me know if these people are lying or bullshitting me. Then from there, I asked the follow-up. See, and then, then, of course, an interviewer. Oh, oh, yeah, that Phil Valentine. That's another jackass, too. And that top catch getting with Phil Valentine. I got to question that kind of shit, too. But um, then the interviewer would say, oh, that's enough. That's enough. Because they know that I'm not falling for the bullshit. So, anyway. They voted Wallace in. How come they didn't vote Elijah Muhammad Jr. in? Now, Wallace was unlike Malcolm X. See, they call Malcolm X the chief hypocrite. But the chief hypocrites, that was Wallace. Hell, even it was even Elijah Muhammad himself. Because he's going against the whole shit. 
Wallace kept whispering in Malcolm's ear over the years. When Wallace, when Malcolm, you know, was like, oh, I, I hear you, but, you know, fuck it. I'm not concerned with that shit. Didn't work. Wallace's plan didn't work. So he kept whispering in his ear again. But apparently Wallace also would defiantly go against his father, saying that he's not a messenger of God. Fard is not God. This nation of Islam shit is a bunch of bullshit. Even though it paid for his lifestyle. That's the chief hypocrite because he's not only going against the messenger, he's going against his own father. But nobody touched him. But you could touch Malcolm X. And clearly Malcolm X had to go for reasons other than worrying about Elijah Muhammad's sex life. Because every time these nation of Islam buffoons defend Elijah, they're defending the old man's perverted sex life. That's what you're doing. Who the fuck else defends somebody's sex life? That's what you're doing. But they voted Wallace in. And there's video of that. And they were happy that the chief hypocrite <laughs> was the Nation of Islam leader. Elijah's Nation of Islam. And you can listen to Jason Black and him tripping over his lies that he knows the truth, but he's a fucking liar and a coon agent. So he had to lie. You see, he's not ready for people like me. And Farrakhan was under Elijah, so that goes to prove that he wasn't handpicked by Elijah Muhammad. And most of us, we assume that Farrakhan... was handpicked by Elijah Muhammad. We assume it was a continuation because the mainstream media, the small hat media, they always call Farrakhan, Nation of Islam leader Farrakhan, try to make his position seem important and official. That's how you know who their slaves are. Like Sharpton and Jesse Jackson, they always show these people crump. Jesse Jackson been laying low. Maybe he's looking old or fucking sick. And you see these people always live a long time, but the people that they need to go against, they got to gun them down. That's pretty easy to figure out. You know, who, who, who they got marked for death, you know? Let these people live and live. I, I, like I said, man, I don't want to live until I don't know what the fuck is going on. I don't know what day it is. <clears throat> I can't walk. I don't give a damn about living that goddamn long. Shit. I wanna, I'm want i an old man. I want to be... I want to have it all together. But some of these people, they're like, fuck it. Let me live as long as I can. See, that's another thing about Star Wars, too. If you notice in Revenge of the Sith, Emperor was like, we can uh, discover the secrets of prolonging life which suggested that that's what the elites are all about because they do live quite a, a long time. Longer than most of us on average. Look at Jimmy Carter. But see, I don't want to go out like that. And if you dig deeper in that Star Wars, you realize that Emperor already had the secrets of prolonged life. That's why when he was about to fight Yoda, he's like, I've been waiting a long, long, long time for this. Just got to pick up on the clues. But anyway, they're the coon agents of the uh, small hats. Farrakhan takes over, starts his own uh, nation of Islam. I'm sorry, Farrakhan starts his own nation of Islam. You know, I, I, another thing I got to point out, too. There, uh, Farrakhan has some very harsh critics out here who hate him to a degree because I don't think they totally hate him when you hear him speaking in totality they just have some gripes about him and then they 
I think they use that he's not following Elijah's uh, nation of Islam as an excuse to articulate why they need to be against him. Then you got people like Solomon and Son of Man who weren't around when Elijah were around, but, well, they were around, but you know, they weren't in the nation of Islam. And they hate Farrakhan because they're not following Elijah. But yet each one of them proclaims to be God. But when it comes down to it, these other critics, I noticed that they never mention the Masonic connection to Farrakhan. So I listen to people very closely. I analyze what they say and what they don't say. And what they don't say can be more important than what they do say. And when they don't talk about the Masonic connection, see, because when you have questions as to why he was never arrested, never charged with murder, conspiracy, or even put up on bogus charges like, uh, you know, child uh, uh, exploitation. I'm not saying he was into that, but then again, some people saying, saying some shit now. But, you know, just to embarrass him and discredit him. It's because of the Masonic connection. But his harshest enemies don't mention that. I wonder why. So Wallace was made the leader of the Nation of Islam. But why would the Nation of Islam members elect a guy who openly said, I hate the Nation of Islam is fake. And then changed it to Orthodox Islam. According to the book I read. They said it's because. Uh, familiarity with uh, Master Farah, Muhammad and Elijah. But I'm like, OK, but there were he had other siblings. Elijah had other sons. He had a brother. How come he didn't they didn't elect him? So there must be something more behind it. Then we know maybe because he was going to change it to Orthodox Islam. That could be the reason. And a lot of the Nation of Islam members changed their name to all these wild ass Arabic names, but they still kept their thuggery. And still conspired to uh, take out Malcolm X. And as you recall, when I talk about Dick Gregory or spoke to the uh, Negro. And I know some people are like, how are you going to disrespect the man? He's a coon agent. That's why. When you're a coon agent, you don't get respect from me. I knew Dick Gregory was full of shit when he said, the shots that killed Malcolm came from above. So that couldn't have been the nation of Islam. They must have been shooting blanks. And the real killers were up top. Got to listen to me now. I said, man, this guy's full of shit. Fucking autopsy said the gunshot blast to the heart is the thing that killed him, and the rest of the shit just finished him off. There was nothing from the top. You can even see the footage outside of the ballroom. You could tell the cops were in on it because they were expecting the shit to go down, number one. And they were calm. cops didn't give a fuck see black negroes they they you know they feel proud and being on a mission when it comes time to take out black people but they never touch the white man all this planning to take out malcolm but nobody else farrakhan the same coon who discolored muhammad almost 30 years later and had him shot on behalf of the white man. To this day, Farrakhan still can't explain why he kicked Khaled to the curb. The bullshit excuse he gave does not suffice. And ever since Khaled died, he's been shitting on his legacy, just like he's been shitting on uh, Malcolm X's legacy. 
And keep in mind, Farrakhan acts like he loved Elijah so much. But Malcolm X was down with Elijah before Farrakhan came on the scene. Malcolm X lived with Elijah and got taught directly by the man. Let me tell you something else, too. Farrakhan was the minister in Boston. And from reading the book, because, you know, uh, Malcolm's sister, was uh, Ella, was in Boston. She would be at that temple a lot. And she had more pull than Farrakhan. More respect than Farrakhan. Because, you got to keep in mind, Malcolm's family got him into the nation of Islam. That's the only thing I don't like about that movie. Because as and Spike Lee, you already know in recent years what his affiliations are. And that's another thing uh, about Farrakhan protecting his ass. So once Spike Lee goes, dies, and Farrakhan dies, like I said, unless Spike Lee uh, recorded some uh, uh, secret scenes that he can re-edit featuring Farrakhan into the movie. I hope he did because that'll be a hell of an artistic uh, thing to have been done. But if he didn't, for future generations, Farrakhan, hell, not even future generations, right now, Farrakhan is cut out of the goddamn movie when he was the chief, one of the chief antagonist, an, an, an antagonators, antagonizers, I'm sorry. <laughs> and, um, but he's not in the movie to get the blame that he deserves. I mean, damn. And like I said to Jason Black. See, I listen to people's words. Because when people lie. You must listen to their words. Carefully. And some who choose not to speak. Now you got to watch their deeds. So. When Farrakhan said. The die is set. And Malcolm. Cannot escape. Malcolm X is still alive at this point. Obviously. Now. What is a die? It's like you're casting something. Casting a hammer, casting anything. And it's also a euphemism for a plan. The die is set. That means it's solid. The plan is solid. They went over it many times. Now it's set. Remember, they used to rent out the Audubon ballroom so they could have a layout of the place and know what they needed to do. So that way, the killers can go in without using their imagination and wondering where the exits are. They go in, they know behind the stage all types of shit. Who let them make the shit out? Who told them to do that? The nation of Islam, they're not clever enough. Black people as a whole aren't clever enough like this. The whole MO of the whole assassination says white man. Controlling them and telling them what to do. Now I know some people might say, see, told you it was bigger than them. No. It was bigger than them, but these niggas still did it. They did it. They chose to do it because they must obey their masters. And they were proud to do it too. So the die is set. That means the plan is set. And Malcolm cannot escape. Knowledge of the plan. Is how he knew that Malcolm cannot escape. That shows that Farrakhan had intimate knowledge of the plan. And was involved in the planning. And he was hoping that he would take over the nation of Islam. And now he was hoping. 
he would take over the nation of Islam. Not Malcolm X. The words tell you everything you need to know. Because some people can't help but to brag about some of the shit that they do. They're going to fall short of saying, yeah, I did it. Fuck it. And of course, we know the famous speech. Did you raise Malcolm? Did you groom up Malcolm and you get him off drugs? If you didn't, so what if we kill Malcolm? If we did, then what the hell business of it is yours? We don't care about no white man law. Yes, you do. First of all, Farrakhan didn't raise up Malcolm. He didn't do shit for Malcolm because Malcolm X was in the Nation of Islam long before Farrakhan. Now, Farrakhan at this point came in, you know, at an early date, but he was, he was after Malcolm X and younger than Malcolm X. Malcolm X was his fucking uh, master. And Farrakhan did him <laughs> like uh, the uh, Emperor uh, Star Wars did, uh, uh, it was a Darth uh, Plagueis. <laughs> Took out his master. I mean, damn. It's something else. So, Farrakhan. I don't know how long this is going to go. It might go two hours for all I know. But Farrakhan is a coon agent. The die is set and Malcolm cannot escape. And that's after many threats in the final call paper. Well, in the, uh, uh, I forgot what the name of it. Many threats in the paper. Of course, you know that famous head roll. Those are the threats, and Malcolm's been getting death threats over the phone. Uh, they knew where he was staying at. Who cares if the FBI or the NYPD were tapping his lines and they were giving feeding the information to the Nation of Islam? And the Nation, of, when he said he got called, somebody called and said, "You're a dead red nigger." That wasn't the Ku Klux Klan calling him and <laughs> saying that shit. That was the Nation of Islam. When they firebombed his home and attempted to kill all of his family just to get at him. And then try to say Malcolm X uh, was the one who did it. That wasn't the KKK. That was the Nation of Islam. They owned the house. Farrakhan's brother lived up the street. James Shabazz is the famous man saying uh, he may have done it himself. And then that's probably why they went after James Shabazz. <laughs> Which is, you know, you had to look, sometimes you got to look shit up like that because when you start seeing a guy that's been in the history books and then all of a sudden he disappears, you got to say, well, what the fuck happened? And you'll find out. So, what are these people doing? So, it's the only thing I hate about doing this shit in the car, man. Then people start getting nosy. But anyway, um, what are you doing? This, where the fuck are you going? So anyway. <clears throat> Farrakhan had intimate knowledge. He was, uh, like I was saying, his sister had more pull in the Boston Moss than he did, according to the book. You combine Malcolm X and his influence over the nation of Islam, then Malcolm X's sister have an influence over Farrakhan's mosque, then that can have some resentment going on and some people could say man damn I'm tired of this guy I can't breathe because as soon as Malcolm X told Farrakhan what the deal was with Elijah then Farrakhan 
took that as an opportunity to start blabbing and hating on uh, Malcolm X. Why is this guy circling the uh, fucking thing? What are you doing? What do you want? What do you? What are you trying to pull off, man? What are you looking for? So, you know, that can contribute to hatred and jealousy of Malcolm X. Because the man was brilliant. And you can see that Farrakhan patterned himself after Malcolm X and every nation of Islam minister pattern themselves after Malcolm X even though they hate the man's guts now I'm sure these ministers will say well they're not ministers on the Farrakhan by the way student ministers they will say no we don't but it's pretty evident just like ministers uh, pattern themselves after Martin Luther King so they want to take these guys out who have influence but they don't like what these guys are saying. They're saying more than they need to say. Saying stuff other than uh, what they're telling them. They're feeling different ways. They're, they're, they're seeing that the scheme is nothing but a big show. And they feel used and abused and had. So they said, let's get rid of these guys. Same thing with JFK. Man comes in figures okay we got a constitution we got laws that a president's supposed to abide by he comes in trying to you know do do the right thing and then he realized beneath the surface you got guys who got a hit squad going on international hit squad and don't like him because he's not listening to them why does this person keep circling this shit and stopping? What are they looking for? Okay, are you coming or what? So, anyway. That's what they do. They just take the people out. And, um... Oh yeah, I keep forgetting some white people might get paranoid seeing me holding this phone, thinking I'm recording uh, movements and shit. Paranoid. But anyway, they take the man out, and to this day they still don't regret what they did. So Jason Black, you're a jive ass coon ass agent. <laughs> oh, that's another thing too. Speaking of jive. He lied about his age before he would never say his age. And he said, just like Tariq Nashi, he slipped up and said he was um, 45. I said, remember, he? I, I got on one time, the motherfucker referred to me as an old nigga. I'm like, motherfucker, I know this guy got to be older than me. Can't be no doubt about that. So he said on one of his broadcasts, he said that he was 45 years old. I said, I know this motherfucker's lying. And then in a recent broadcast, he was talking about, I forgot the exact specifics, but I know he was talking about some shit that was happening around 1980, 1981. I'm like, hold up. This motherfucker's 45. Now the fuck you know what the fuck was going on and what life was like in 1981. That, that, that's just not possible. <laughs> so he slipped up. Just like Tariq Nasheed had the, the these people saw it on my, uh, I think it was the Facebook, he had a uh, promo uh, poster saying he was 49, born in 1974. <clears throat> At the time of whenever it was put up. And um, then he said, he slipped up and said on the air, you remember that when he said he went to the movies to see It's Alive when that when it first came out. And that came out 1974. 
or was it 73? Whichever the case around that time. So how are you going to be born in 1974 but go see the movie when it first came out? These people lie. And I don't even care about what their age is. I'm, I'm, me, I'm worried about why they're lying. <laughs> That's what I'm worried about. Some people are generous and give Tariq Nasheed the age of 55. But I'm going to say he's closer to 60. Just like Jay-Z is. He got new teeth, new hair. Looked like he may have gotten a facelift. And his woman, I noticed that he refers to Lexus as my lady. Not his wife. Because if she married and you can find a marriage license, he can't use Tariq Nasheed unless he legally changed his name. But if he legally changed his name, then people should be able to find out what the name used to be. And of course, his wife or woman is obviously 20 years younger than he is at the very least. You can just see that in her face. Because she didn't have to go get a facelift and, and no fake teeth. <laughs> so Jason Black is full of shit. Farrakhan and then for any Negro to say that Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam didn't take out Malcolm X, you know that they're full of shit and they're coon agents. And again, I expect everybody to flip once Farrakhan dies. Right now, they're just kissing his ass, kissing the, the ring. But once he dies, that'll be that. Because no, there will be no more kissing his ass. And I don't know who, who the fuck his successor is supposed to be. That's the other thing, too. Farrakhan kissed the white man, Father Flager, on the lips and said he's not gay. Father, Father Flager is embroiled in some shit. And he also called the white man, the devil, uh, Father Flager, his best friend. Now, if that don't do something for you, I don't know what to say. But mainstream media, they don't talk about that. They never really talked about why Farrakhan would hold conferences and always invite Father Flager. Who knows what the fuck these guys are doing behind the scenes. But the bottom line is it's easy to discredit him. It's easy to, just like they try to, dis, they try to discredit Alex Jones. Even though that's all a, a routine. But my point is, whether it's Farrakhan or Alex Jones or anybody that they don't like. Just like I was talking at the beginning when the police harass you, they can give a bogus arrest on you and say uh, you're in an arrest for uh, suspected cocaine or some shit like that. C cocaine trafficking. Even if you have nothing to do with nothing. Just to bring you down on those charges, then they can put that shit in the media, your mugshot. Just to discredit you. If they wanted that to happen. Put you on child P charges. That'll ruin you. Show your mug shot. Then have a phony ass. Uh, uh, individuals, witnesses and victims. Like all this sex uh, abuse bullshit. All that shit is bullshit. Keep going around. It's just some Freemason bullshit. But they, if they wanted to discredit somebody, they could easily do it. But they don't discredit Farrakhan. The white man doesn't fear Farrakhan. Farrakhan is an old man. Older than Biden. And they both look like they're ready uh, uh, <laughs> for, for retirement at any moment. But. They keep these guys. You know Biden's been uh, waiting to become a president or somebody uh, more significant. Even if he had, has to do it at the end of his uh, term. Life term, that is. Because <laughs> he doesn't look like he could last much longer. Farrakhan's been talking tough. But, I mean, a 90-year-old man, I mean, how tough can a 90-year-old man be? 
So Jason Black, you're full of shit. You're a fucking entertainer. A coon agent. Oh, you know why I was about to leave. Then I forgot there was a part two to the question. That's why, if you notice, I kept trying to move on so I can answer the other question that this egomaniac uh, tried to bring up. He said, name other colonial empires that were not white. People came up with a few ideas, but see, the problem is a lot of black people, unfortunately, are very ignorant. They go more by what they heard. That's why they keep trying to brainwash black people the way that they do. Because they know black people go by hearsay more than actual research. See, once I actually started researching, even the, the first it was the difficult things. Then it was the simple things that I already knew or thought that I knew. And then once I actually started looking up simple words uh, uh, definitions of words that I thought I knew the definitions of I realized damn I didn't know the exact definition and I didn't know the additional definitions then I said you know what I gotta make it a habit to look up every word that I felt comfortable thinking that I knew and you learn more about that in college too And then you'll realize, damn, because if you grew up like I did watching the Knicks, MSG, you'll listen to my man. Uh, oh, I keep forgetting my man's name. Not Clive. Uh, yeah, Clive, right? Clyde, Clyde. It's my man, Clyde. Uh, God damn. You know, my man used to play on the Knicks in the 70s. You know, my man got a hell of a vocabulary. So that's a guy you can listen to and say, damn, why is he using that word? I thought that word meant this and that. Look it up. But once you look it up, then you realize you can't be fooled because that's what lawyers do. They use every little word, no matter how simplistic the word might be. It can just rearrange a whole contract or an agreement. That's why they use that Latin shit in law and even in the medical field not only because of a roman legacy so to speak because the germanic tribes took over rome and they were speaking that latin and learning what the romans had but it's a way to trick people who don't know the profession and you in effect got to learn latin to learn a lot of shit well it's better to learn latin because some people think that they're highly intelligent when they say oh this and that that's latin for such and such and such and such when they're a lawyer or somebody or a scientist but the truth be told if you just took latin now you know it all because it's just fucking translation but that's how they get slick so anyway Mr. Black was asking people, name some other non-white colonial empires. People were coming up with some ideas, but they didn't know the totality of the shit. At least they didn't know how to argue it down with him because they feel intimidated by the guy, and that's part of his tactics. But, um... He tried to make it look like only white people and Europe had colonial empires. And I want to go there with him, but he pretended to get mad at the Farrakhan thing because he really couldn't go any further. So he said, fuck it, I got to retire this. But I was going to suggest Russia. Somebody brought Russia up and then he tried to say no. But see, that goes to show he doesn't know nothing about Russia and their original boundaries. Russia is a colonial empire right now. Speak Russian from coast to coast. Go on YouTube and watch videos about Asian Russia and all the Asians that are speaking uh, fucking Russian and shit. That's them. And then the Mongolian Empire. 
which is what Russia uh, basically took over. And that Mongolian that crosses over with Turkic peoples. But somebody called up and said the Turkey Turkish Empire. There's a difference between the Ottoman Empire. There was never a Turkish Empire, number one. There's the Ottoman Empire, which came as a result of Turkic peoples taking over. Then there's the Turkic empires, which includes the Mongolian empires, Mughal empires, practically everything from out in Siberia, Mongolia area up until fucking Turkey itself. Turkic peoples, people who speak Turkic languages, which are all similar. Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, Central Asia, even in Iran. That's why I repeat often that because people, and I was ignorant to this myself, that Turks don't come from Turkey. I, that's why I keep repeating that so people will get it through their heads. That just ended up being their home base once they got to the Mediterranean. Istanbul, Constantinople became their home base, their headquarters. You had the Turks on one side of Islam on the Mediterranean. Then you had the Moors on the other side. And then later on, the Turks had strong influence over Morocco, even though it wasn't necessarily a part of the Ottoman Empire. But they appointed Pashas. That's why they got Pashas there. That's Turkic. And if you actually look at the Turkic speaking peoples, it still forms a continu contiguous uh, belt from Mon Siberia, Mongolia to Turkey. Matter of fact, another FYI information. I was just looking some shit up last night because I wanted to see what the difference was between this modern Greek language and ancient Greece because the Ottoman Empire took over Greece. So the fuck you think they're going to keep on speaking ancient Greek? But anyway, I learned that in Italy today, they still got regions in, in Italy that speak Greek. Mainly on the what they call the boot, so the, the heel and the in the toe areas. I was like, damn. See, that's the legacy of when the Greeks occupied Italy before the the Latins came in there. And of course, the Greeks spawned the Roman Empire. So you know, the shit is deep. So that's something to bring up to next time you have a, a debate with an Italian. <laughs> when they keep talking about all this Italian shit tell them motherfuckers you got parts of Italy today that speak Greek tell me about that <laughs> but um yeah so you got the Mongol Mongolian empires the Turkic empires of course the Ottoman empire and that was colonial when they and, and for people who don't know colonial empire that means that the culture or religion or which is part of culture or the language changes into the language that the invader speaks some people brought up roman but uh, technically you can throw that in there he said not nah, european <clears throat> but that was european but even though originally they were not from europe so you could throw that in there. Some people try to say the Arab Empire. But when you say Arab Empire, that means you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> um, because there's really Islam. First it was under Arabs. And then, of course, the Turks. So Islam, Arabic, became the uh, written imperial language, so to speak. Because it was what was in the Quran. But individual languages, these people aren't really speaking Arabic per se. Like I said before, these people can't understand one another. When they go to the Arab League meeting, they got to use interpreters. Because they don't speak 
fucking real Arabic. People in Ethiopia. And I noticed Tariq Nashi was talking about that shit. Now you know who's been talking about that shit for the longest time calling the Ethiopian Sem- Semites. You people still think that this man ain't listening to me? He ain't mentioning the name, that's all. But you know I said the people in Ethiopia, they, they speak Semitic languages. They're more Semitic, for real, than anybody in fucking North Africa or even the fucking Arabia. The governments, that is. Because the governments are still Ottoman Turk. It's deep. Islam kind of convolutes a lot of things. But if you could tell the difference between, like if you say, see calligraphy with Arabs and with Turks, if you could tell the difference just by looking, even if you can't read the shit, then you're off to a good start. But as a rule of thumb, the white man, if you notice when people are black, the white man mysteriously can't come up with any depictions of the people. Like uh, Carthage. Israelites. Arabs. During the time. Of Islam and the invasions. But before Turks came. Or got involved. Europeans before the uh, the the Romans, they don't like showing you these de- depictions of these people. Of course, North Africa, they act like they don't exist. But what it is, they don't want to show you this shit because then that'll show you the black world, and the world was black, and the white man was coming in and taking shit over little by little, and the Ottoman Turks were white. There are other colonial empires you can go by. Uh, Some people say the Chinese. But even in China, they speak different languages. But you can you can throw that in. You can throw China in. Some people say Japan. And you can throw that in because they took over Japan. And they supposedly come from China. (laughs) But I'm sure the native language of Japan influenced the current language of of Japan. And then you got shit in the Americas. You got the Mayans, Aztecs. So there are other, I mean, come on. I don't know what this propaganda is these guys are coming up with, but it's a fucking pain in the ass. These coon agents. This is why they don't like debating people or having even a prolonged discussion. Because they know that they're lying and they know that people like me will see them and meet them on their their lies. Just like that, my aunt forever. I told the Negro, well, the European, the other day, I said, listen, man, you ha- you talking about Hannibal. I consider myself a semi-expert on the matter. Definitely more than these people who only talk about Kemet. You want to know if that was Hannibal on the coins? I could tell you. You want to know what the other people look like or the Phoenicians look like that he came from? Because it, because now black people are talking about, oh, yeah, Hannibal spoke a Semitic language. Oh, they came from someplace else. But all you got to do is look at the Phoenicians. It's pretty clear what they were. There's no room for misinterpretation with the Phoenicians. No room. But, of course, when you're dealing with people who don't know what an Afro looks like, don't know what nappy hair is and if that's something that white people have or not or non-black people have you know you're gonna get what you're gonna get out of it (laughs) so but jason black and these other coon agents i can't stand them but if they want to lie at least stand on your shit and let other people uh uh bust your shit but of course you ain't gonna let that happen because you already know the deal so with that being said i think i got all that I had to get out on this Louis Farrakhan matter. 
And I can't wait for the man to expire because not only is he a coon agent, he's a hater of black America. And I want all these people who tremble in fear, old man Farrakhan, to finally shut the fuck up and turn the page. Then you can concentrate on the next man. See, you can't keep shitting on Malcolm X. Malcolm X was just. And Malcolm X, since that, he probably shouldn't have said the shit about Elijah. But Wallace kept putting the bug in his ear. Now, Malcolm X, streetwise, he, he, I'm sure he knew the first time when Wallace tried to uh, whisper that shit in his ear. He realized, let me let it go. But at the same time, he's like, damn, that's Elijah's son. So, of course, he ain't going to lie to me. But he's probably he was probably asking, wondering why he uh, is volunteering this information. Was he what is he expecting me to do about this shit? And the evidence shows that that's what Malcolm X basically said, you know, well, not said, but that's his actions showed that that he's like, you know, I don't really want to be bothered with this shit. But Wallace kept insisting. And I'm sure Wallace must have gone to other people. But see, since Wallace was Elijah's son, Nation of Islam members could not go and whip Wallace's ass. That's what they couldn't do. But they could do that with, with somebody else. And Wallace, of course, knew what he can get away with and what he couldn't get away with. And he knew he had special privileges being Elijah's son. So he took advantage. Now, I'll leave Jason Black and anybody else with the question as to how come Farrakhan was not the heir to the Nation of Islam if you make that claim. Answer that question. Honestly. And you know what? You don't have an answer. 